And it's another trading week in December, 10 a.m. right here in Lagos, Nigeria. Good morning, good evening. Wherever in the world you might be watching from is Business Morning coming to you live from Channels HQ right here in Lagos. Well, let's get the top stories um, that sets your agenda now in a remarkable surge. We see Bitcoin's price has soared past the 41,500 mark. Uh, the price surge above the 40,000 resistance zone is up over 5%, and a new multi-month high is formed near $40,890. The price is now consolidating uh, gains above the 23.6% uh, Fibonacci retracement level of the recent increase from the $39,360 swing low to the $40,890 um, high. We'll drill down on key reasons behind this uh, rally later on on the show. Also, new highs. We see gold prices notched a new record today for a second day in a row, with spot prices touching $2,100 as a global rush for bullion appears to uh, set to continue. Uh, gold prices are on course to hit fresh highs uh, next year and could remain well above the $2,000 level. That's according to analysts citing geopolitical uncertainty, a likely weaker U.S. dollar and possible interest rate cuts. Let's get a quick check on the oil market now. We'll see oil futures uh, reverse course uh, after rising uh, briefly today amid persistent pressure from OPEC plus uh, decision and uncertainty over global fuel demand growth. Although the risk of uh, supply disruptions from the Middle East conflicts uh, limited the losses, Brent crude futures is down about 0.9% to $78.15 a barrel, while U.S. WTI crude uh, that was trading at $73.43 a barrel, down 0.8% uh, uh, or about $0.64. Cents. Quickly to the grains market now. See Chicago uh, grain futures tick down today as traders monitored the prospects of showers in drought-stricken Brazil, the biggest global supplier, while corn and wheat lost steam after a brief rally last week. The most active soybean contract SV1 on the Chicago Board of Trade, that was down 0.79% at $13.14 for half a bushel. And the most active wheat contract, WV1, that was down 0.25% at $6.01 for a quarter of a bushel. And corn CV1 slipped 0.67% to $4.82 for half a bushel. So that's how the major markets uh, we track. That's us looking uh, right now. But back here, we see the Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, has assured that the 27.5 trillion Naira 2024 budget presented by President Bola Tinubu to the National Assembly will mark the beginning of a transformation era in the country once it is passed by the federal lawmakers. The Information Minister says that the proposed budget signifies pivotal steps towards the re realization uh, President Tinubu's uh, renewed uh, hope agenda by aligning fiscal strategies and priorities with broader national uh, development objectives. We're speaking at the 2023 annual public lecture of the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations, Kaduna State Chapter. Take a listen. DJ, if you're ready. It is the 2023 annual public lecture organized by the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations, NIPR, Kaduna State Chapter. The theme of this year's lecture, Demographic Transition, Ethical Resource and Sustainable Development, Reflections on Northern Nigeria, interrogates the social, political and economic realities of the region. It is imperative we take ownership of the narrative to create a strong, future-proof society for our youthful population. The lecture provides a platform for the Minister of Information and National Orientation to highlight the impact the 2024 budget will make on the nation's economy. President Chinobu's administration recognizes the importance of economic stability. As the 2024 appropriation bill moves through the legislative process, we are very optimistic that its passage will mark the beginning of a transformative era, bringing tangible improvements to the lives of Nigerians. Before this week's budget presentation, President Tinubu had assented to an equally important supplementary budget, signed a number of landmark bills and executive orders into law, and inaugurated special presidential initiatives on fiscal policy reform, compressed natural gas, food security, MSME support, and other critical areas of the economy. The goal, of course, is to deliver relief to the Nigerian people 
and lay groundwork for true and lasting prosperity. On the part of the former governor of Niger State, the gap between the passage and implementation of budgets in Nigeria requires urgent attention. For the past 30 years, there was no one year that the budget would have passed its law that we have achieved 60% of implementation of that. Then that should, ask, should make us to ask the question. That should make us to tell our senators and the members of the House of Representatives. But again, we have spoiled them. Till tomorrow, nobody knows how much they are paid. Excluding going into the parastatals and the ministries. Excluding the pardon of the budget, where they know what they put there. So it has become a symbiotic relationship now of the real corruption. Participants at this lecture are united in a belief that there is a need for government agencies and institutions to be alive to their responsibilities of ensuring that annual budgets are fully implemented, in addition to continuing with projects that were started by previous administrations, since government is a continuous process. And now to our first conversation. Well, some changes are being made at GTEx uh, Holdings, a real estate investment company with footprints abroad. Dr. Stephen Akintai recently stepped down as CEO to take up a more oversight role of chairman and appointed seven new CEOs to head up the uh, different subsidiaries. Let's hear why this is coming and uh, get uh, to know some of the uh, CEOs. Well, joining us now is Dr. Stephen Akintai, chairman, uh, GTEx uh, holding his join us via virtually. While well, we have Mr. Rana Iges, uh, Group CEO, GTEx uh, Holdings, join us right in the studio. We also have uh, Quinette uh, Uchendu, General Manager, uh, GTEx uh, Land, uh, both of them right here in the studio. Great to have you both. <laughs> great. great to be here. Too. And uh, great to have you, Mr. Uh, McIntyre, joining us uh, virtually. Great to have you. So um, let's start off with you now, uh, Dr. Stephen McIntyre. So what factors led to the decision to transition from the role of group CEO to the advisory position of chairman at uh, GTEx um, Holdings, and, and what considerations influenced the selection of Mr. Rana uh, I just right here with us in the studio. Good morning. How are you doing today? I hope you can hear me. I can hear you loud um, and clear. Okay, good. So, um, I mean, we know the story of GTEx and how we started um, from a very humble beginning. And um, we, we, over time, are growing bigger and bigger. And uh, the subject of liquidity and raising funds has become a major priority. And for me, I'm just a basic trader. I, you know, and so talking about institutional funding, it was necessary to get a professional. Uh, Mr. Rana has over two decades as an investment banker. And so he understands and has the credibility to bring um, a lot of institutional funding, which is the critical phase we are now, which is we're trying to raise a lot of funding to be able to execute most of the construction work we have all over the world. Yeah, I can imagine. And uh, talking about uh, Mr. Rana, I'll come to you um, now. You're, you have a background in investment uh, banking. You know, talk, to, talk to us about you know, your, your strategy to actually lead you know, such a company as this, and uh, definitely with a, a new climate here in Nigeria. Talk to us about that. Uh, good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Great to have you. Uh, as our chairman mentioned, you know, I'm an investment banker for over more than two decades, based in Dubai, and I've been operating in the financial market since then. You know, my forte has been real estate and hospitality sectors. Uh, you, uh, what I've, typically I have done, you know, other than the conventional lending, where senior debts are, could do come in, I've been very innovative in structuring the financial solutions. Uh, you know, uh, investment banking is something which brings you some innovative un and unique approach to meet your financial needs. And I think company like GTAX Holdings, which is going to the next level, my coming in is uh, bridging that gap. And particularly, I've been in Nigeria for the last two months. I have been running around all the Nigerian capital market players, met the regulators, FMDQ and SEC. And 
uh, I could see there's a potential. We could raise some local funding as well, and we are exploring those options. But companies more, GTAX is more of kind of global organization. No, we're not limiting ourselves to Nigeria. I'm in discussion with the investment banks in Dubai, in Zurich, and in US as well. We just launched a 40-acre property in Houston, which is our first milestone in US. And uh, we initially secured the funding, and we have already registered our GVEST capital, which is a SEC, US SEC approved fund in the United States for crowdfunding platform. So there are a lot happening at the moment in GTEx. I have a young team of CEOs, very vibrant and dynamic. So chairman has taken up his uh, seat back. He is, he is very much on, on the business, but he is a kind of advisory role. I'm here to spearhead the affairs of the company in restructuring a proper gov uh, corporate governance culture and taking up the financial requirements and meeting those demands. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure you're not seeing this as, as a tall hill at this time. You sound like you're ready <laughs> for this, uh, definitely. Great, great to hear that. Let me come to uh, uh, Quinette uh, Chindu. Uh, great to have you also this morning, and you're, you're in charge of lands, you know, at this time. Yeah. And definitely there's a lot going on, you know, in, in the real estate um, industry in Nigeria right now. We're seeing demolitions, you know, everywhere at this time for illegal structures, you know, that is. And there's still some regulatory issues, you know, a, yes. around this space. Talk to me about what you're bringing, you know, at this time to actually... Make buyers feel comfortable you knowing that you're, you're buying this land or buying this property and at some point it doesn't get demolished. So good morning and thank you for having me. So yes, I've been in the real estate space for some years now and part of the ways we've been able to build trust in the heart of our buyers is by solving, creating solutions to the problems faced in the real estate spaces. So yes, uh, GTAX land is majorly focused on, aside the sales of land, we're also focused on educating our clients. So we've made the sales process very seamless. So we've answered questions like educating clients, what should they expect if I go into real estate? So just like you said, a lot of persons have been scammed, right? So if they know what to do, right, they would not have excuses to be scammed because they are actually following the script. So for we, we educate clients, what should I look out for? Where is the land located? What is the status of the land? If I get this property with you, what should I expect? Is there documentation? Those are the kind of things we educate our clients. In fact, uh, allow me to boast with this. We're one of the first real estate companies that's currently doing what we call a virtual inspection. Now, the reason why we do virtual this is... Virtual inspection? Yes. The reason why so we do this is... I don't have to is, go physically exactly. to so you can some be, outskirts land. Yes. You can be in the U.S., you can be in Malaysia. You don't need to send your relative to buy your property. You know, a lot of times in, uh, on social media, we've seen a lot of persons tell you that I gave my relations money and I just got back and I've been scammed. There's no property. So now you can see your property. You can watch the allocation process. So yes, I... Two days ago, we just uh, launched our serious estate, Ekbe, that if it was there to allocate to smart investors and we aired this life. I think Channels too was there with us. Right. So, you see, these are part of the ways we try to build trust with our clients, make them feel relaxed wherever they are in the world. Another thing we're doing is we're very customer centric. You know, the client is everything. Without the client, we're not the brand. So we've been able to grow this brand as a result of our client database, the love they have shown us also. And how did we do that? Uh, I also want to boast with this point. We're also one of the first real estate companies to have what we call a 24-7 CRM. So you can be in the U.S. You know there's a time difference with the U.S. and Nigeria. Uh, any client can call us at any time. So we have a team of professionals that is ready for you. Any point in that you can reach out for your queries, your inquiries, you want consultation, we're right there for you. So because we value relationship, that's why we're trying to build it. And yes, this is what has worked for us over the years. So even if I call at 1 a.m. Yes, Nigerian time, of course. somebody's going to be there. Even if you send a mail. I'm telling you. I'll get a response been, immediately. Yes, immediately. I'll, I'll definitely put that to the test. Of course. Well, let me come to <laughs> Mr. Akitara now. You know, we... 90% of your team consisting of young professionals and you know seven young CEOs heading subsidiaries. Do you, do you have any concerns about their preparedness, exposure, maturity, and you know handling the considerable pressures inherent you know in this uh, business uh, landscape? 
Well, very good question. Um, what we've done is to balance it. You know, um, Mr. Rana is in his 50s. We have some other people as well who are in the C-suit who work strongly with the CEOs um, and they're uh, quite older. Uh, for our work, is very intense. Um, I left um, Houston about 4.45 last night landed in Heathrow on my way to the to my hotel i'm having this interview i have another meeting um uh, 12 noon here in london so it's really a very intense kind of work and if you if you're not the strength of the youth is an added advantage however we then have older ones because once you combine strength of the youth with the wisdom of the old i often say miracle happen and for us, that's what we're doing. And we have no choice but to um, develop our young people. Well, the company that is thinking long term, we're hoping that we'll be here in the next 1,000 years. And one of the best ways to begin to uh, train people and even the whole process of having a new group CEO is part of that understanding that uh, the earlier you master the art of succession and perfect it um the better a lot of people wait till they are way older before they you know uh experiment and and perfect their succession plan so for us it's doing that early and then you know of course on ground to be able to help uh mitigate whatever challenges we have Yes, and um, definitely talking about, you know, the business space um, here, here in Nigeria, uh, come to you um, now, uh, Mr. Rana, you know, definitely this is a Nigerian company, you know, <laughs> first of all. Uh, do you think uh, you understand this, you know, business climb well enough, you know, to lead this kind of company? Yeah, I think this is a very important question, you know. This was on my head when I was offered the position, you know. A lot of skepticism was in my mind when I took up the position. But I do remember, you know, fundamentals of financial or real estate markets are same globally. Yes, each domestic environment could be different or challenging. When I came into Nigeria, I could see the challenges. But the good news is Nigeria is changing. I could see that political will and reform agenda, which is going to transform Nigeria in coming years. You know, the main thing is about perception outside in the global world. Uh, that got to be changed. When I talked to the bankers in Dubai and DFC, the first question around, are you in Nigeria yourself? Because that is a big thing. And my coming in itself is a manifestation that Nigeria is safe. And what I have seen, it's a buzzing business environment. Lot is happening here. It's a big population, 200 million plus. Lot of demand of housing units, infrastructure. So all international players are looking into Africa, particularly in Nigeria. I, I have gathered a lot of information. I'm comfortable in operating in Nigeria. But don't forget, we are global. Uh, I, I'm based in Dubai, but will be frequent visits to Nigeria and our U.S. missions. And practically, I have traveled to all major cities of Nigeria. Don't be surprised. I have been to Port Harker, by road, Asaba, Benin, and every other city. So I have felt what Nigeria is all about. So... Uh, I'm confident uh, with this young team, with the leadership and vision of our chairman. I got that management and financial experience, which takes to the company to the next level. And our vision is to build 25,000 green and smart homes. And we are aiming to raise about $25 billion globally to meet at that requirement. And, and I hope you can also give us some affordable housing <laughs> with all of that. Oh, oh yes, yes, definitely. We, we, we are not known in the market as the cheapest. We are... Uh, on the higher end, I would say. Right. But we are trying to make ourselves more affordable to the common man as well. And another thing which makes us more affordable, we have so much flexibility in payment options. So today, you can acquire a piece of house and with a certain deposit, about 25-30% and spread over uh, 24 to 36 months. We have those options. So all our valued clients, I would emphasize, don't miss it out. Because real estate is something which you, uh, you cannot catch over time. We just launched a state in Ape two days back. I think this is a high opportunity to grab that land, and you will see in three months the prices would be double. Right.
Definitely. That's uh, why we all want to buy those cheap lands, getting early and make a profit, you know, at Absolutely. some point. Well, let me come to you now, um, Quinette. We know GTEx land subsidiary focuses, uh, the focus seems to overlap with that of uh, GTEx um, homes. Is there some kind of fine line or, or difference with that? Of course, there's a huge difference. So if I go by the name Land and Home, so you can see a difference. So, but for GTEx Land, uh, our focus is on the acquisition and the sales of luxury service plots. Uh, our goal is to own over 200 estates, luxury estates across the globe, and with a guarantee that's guaranteeing our clients over uh, a high investment in about five to ten years which is what we call the land banking. And then for GTEx Homes, is a subsidiary that's in charge of building on that estate. That's the luxury service plot. Those estates, GTEx land is acquiring. So they are in charge of building the vision of 25,000 housing units, smart estates in that particular estate. So yes, GTEx land, GTEx Homes. We're just majorly concerned in acquisition of the land, sales of the land. Right. Definitely, so so much to to unpack there. But uh, Dr. Akinta, now be, before I uh, before we wrap things up, I, I'd like to get your outlook. You know, going into 2024, what should we be expecting from GTEx? Well, um, a lot of good news. Um, as you can see, there's so much we're doing in terms of expansion. Um, last Saturday, we just did open house for our 40 acres in Katy, Houston, Texas, in the U.S. Um, when that project is completed, it's going to be the largest green and smart home in the whole of U.S. as we're building over 400 to 500 units of green and smart So there's so much of expansion. Um, people need to all, uh, adjust to the reality that we are really the national company. Our uh, expansion in Dubai continues as well. And um, we're open to to doing business at a bigger scale. And um, we're also looking at a few um, options and products, just like um, the group CEO said, that can make the um, flexible payment. Real estate isn't that affordable, but how do we make it more accessible? Uh, cooperative is looking into, and starting from next year, an opportunity for people to start Start saving as low as 10,000, 20,000 every month from their salary. And then we now, the cooperative now giving them an opportunity to borrow another 500% towards buying a land. You know, so those are the ways we hope we can, you know, intervene in trying to see that people, their accessibility of buying land and owning houses become a lot better. So they should look forward to a lot of good news, a lot of um, expansion, a lot more better quality products in land, in housing, and some other new subsidiaries that are start coming up. Uh, we're looking at starting movies. Uh, we have about two movie scripts um, that are likely to come next year. So there's a whole lot. Some Quite I can disclose now. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely we'll be, we'll be looking forward to that and also the uh, movie aspect uh, of it all. Thank you so much. It was great having you all. Uh, Dr. Stephen Akinta, who is now the chairman uh, GTEx Holdings. He joined us virtually. And we also had right here in the studio Rana Ijaz, Group CEO, uh, GTEx Holdings, and Quinef uh, Ichendu, General Manager, GTEx Land. It's great having all of you. I would definitely hope um, Nigerians can afford more houses going into 2024, hopefully. Well, definitely. It's exciting times for us. Uh, we are just finalizing our budgets, a lot of offerings in the market. So keep, uh, watch out uh, GTAX. We'll keep watching that space. And we look forward and thank you for having us. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so you. much. Yeah. All right, so we wrap it, uh, we wrap things up there. When we come back, we're looking at some latest acquisitions right here, company acquisitions in Nigeria. That's our next uh, conversation and, and other matters. That's in a moment. Just stay with us.
And the South African billionaire family, popularly known as Oppenheimer, has acquired a controlling stake in one of Nigeria's prominent can makers, that's GZ, uh, GZ Industries. The acquisition was completed by Jonathan Oppenheimer, one of the sons of the second uh, richest man in Africa, that's uh, Nikki Oppenheimer, who reportedly secured a full control of GZ Industries uh, Limited. Well, in the past 10 years, we've seen some major exits of multinational uh, companies. Let's get a sense of what to expect and our other matters in the Nigerian economy. Joining me now, uh, joining us now for that conversation is Kelvin Emmanuel, CEO. Um, Derry Hills, great to have you, Kelvin. Good morning. Thank you for having me, Ladi. Fantastic. So, as I said there, you know, in the last 10 years, we've seen some major companies, you know, exit Nigeria, the likes of... Uh, Glaxo, Smith Klein, Tower, and other, other uh, uh, top brands. Talk to us about the significance of this acquisition of, of GZ uh, Industries. Why now? Well, it, to be honest with you, I, I think uh, it's very strategic. And the reason is because um, aluminum cans, aluminum roofing sheets are made from petroleum coke which is a derivative of refining crude oil. So it is very timely that at the eve of when Nigeria is going to get back to actually refining petroleum coke in commercial quantities, because petroleum coke is actually 4% of um, 179 liters per barrel of um, derivatives gotten when you refine crude oil. And that uh, a South African billionaire has decided to invest in one of the largest makers of aluminum cans for the beverage makers across West Africa, GZ Industries. And um, Ladi, if you, if you pay attention, you realize that um, beverage cans are one of the reasons why the cost of soda drinks has actually gone up. Apart from the SSB tax on sugary drinks, beverage can is one of the major reasons why the cost of the drinks has gone up. Because uh, apart from sweetness, um, that a lot of the beverage makers are moving to from sugar, you know, the major, other major cost for canned drinks is actually beverage cans. And the fact that, you know, Naira has been dropping and the pet coke that is used for making beverage cans in Nigeria is actually imported. The cost of uh, soda drinks has actually gone up. And it's strategic because, you know, South Africans have always seen opportunities. In 2001, Kuzbeka sent a scout to China and invested in Ponima's company called Tencent. Um, about 22 years later, Tencent is one of the largest companies in China. And Tencent has made NASPA, which is a company Kuzbeka runs, a South African billionaire, one of the largest um, companies in the world. You know, they own shares in MTN, they own shares in uh, ShopRite, they own shares in several other companies, even in multi-choice that Nigerians are well familiar with, NASPAs. So it, it, it's a call that in the midst of the difficulties Nigeria has and in the midst of the tough macroeconomic conditions that we have, we have inflation, uh, food inflation at 31.1%, uh, headline inflation at 27.3%, uh, risk free rate is um, over 20%. Uh, in the midst of all these difficulties, bank, uh, commercial bank lending rate is anywhere between 30% and 33% a day. There are opportunities that exist, even if you know, for Nigerian businesses, it's difficult for them to do business in an environment where they're having to pay commercial lending rate at over 30% and they're having to raise um, corporate bonds or commercial papers at between 18 and 20%. And foreign capital is cheaper. Foreign capital is cheaper because, you know, the rates are usually single digits where the funds are coming from. And they only have to battle with the fact that uh, they have to understand the market cycles to see how to not have the external risk of devaluation of the currency exceed the internal rate of returns from doing business in Nigeria. All right, so, uh, you know, at a time where we're seeing, you know, rising cost of doing business, we're seeing inflation, all-time high, the Naira is um, under pressure at this time, companies still, you know, struggling to, you know, get uh, most of their dollars, you know, out of the country at, at this time. Would, would you say... Uh, Warren Buffett's uh, slogan is what's uh, playing out here, buy when the market is fearful. Is that what it is? Uh, absolutely. The, the slogan says, buy when there's blood on the streets and then sell when everybody gets um, 
too confident in the market. I, I think this is the right time to invest in Nigeria, even if um, I would say CBN's net uh, reserves are ne net negative and uh, they are, they've not been able to clear out 100% of the outstanding uh, forwards for commercial letters of credit, commercial uh, uh, capital and dividend remittances and from A. But they are blo there's blood on the streets and investors are afraid, uh, rightfully so. Um, but I'll tell you that it's cheaper to get into Nigeria right now because of the weak Naira. And this is the time to invest because in terms of especially enterprise manufacturing, where I see the most opportunities, you know, um, there are opportunities opening up. The fact that um, um, refiners are going to start producing polypropylene and polyethylene crystals, which are derivatives of petrochemical feedstock. And those crystals are used for everything from rubber, plastic, um, containers, um, uh, resins, dye, um, and pipes. It, it's an opportunity for industries that are going to emerge in Nigeria, industries that don't have to rely on importing these products, looking for from, uh, sorry, um, commercial letters of credit from banks to import these um, raw material inputs to be able to produce. So to be honest with you, I think this is an opportunity and this is a time for companies to bring in capital and invest in the real sector um, and invest in enterprise manufacturing especially that is made it difficult for um, companies like GSK and Sanofi and a few other companies to operate in Nigeria, um, considering that their supply chain is exposed to import of raw materials. All right, you, hear, you heard it there from, from Kelvin. This is the best time uh, to invest uh, in Nigeria right now. But let's take a look at some other matters now. We did see the central bank um, says it will freeze accounts without a bank verification number, BVN, or national identification number, that's a NIN, from April um, 2024. Uh, talk to me, is this um, something to be uh, cherry about at this time? I, I, to be honest with you, I wonder why they took so long to say they are going to freeze accounts, um, considering that there are 133 million bank accounts in Nigeria, and only 59 million have BVN. And when I did the numbers, that came to around 30.4 or 30.5 accounts um, on an average per account holder. So for me, I think it's important because in terms of financial inclusion, in terms of um, the security of the financial system, the infrastructure that was built by Nigerian Interbank Payment and Settling System and how that layer works across um, the financial and banking sector in Nigeria, it's very critical that all accounts have BVNs. And it's also very important that the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria works with the um, Nigerian Identity Management Company, NIMC. Until now, other than for security purposes, I don't see the, the use of national identification number. It's good that the Nigerian Immigration Service has actually you know, um, inculcated um, your NIN to passport. So if you don't bring your NIN, the immigration will not process passports for you. But other than the security infrastructure of Nigeria, it's important that the NIN is integrated into the BVN. And the NIN is also spread across your um, permanent voter's card to avoid duplication within the system. So for example, if um, a security agency pulls up one central number, like uh, your BVN, for example, they should be able to get every information that um, is regarding to that person across lines. You know? So for me, I think it's very critical to you know, create an extra level of financial security and also in, um, bringing the BVN and NIN together will ensure that you're able to get um, um, all the other non-banking financial institutions across the um, rural areas to see that they can pull them into the financial system you know, and, and raise financial inclusion in Nigeria. So, but, the, you know, giving a deadline and ensuring that every account in Nigeria is connected to BVN is also a means to prevent money laundering, um, to deepen the work of um, the um, financial regulators and also improve financial inclusion. So I think it's a good move, albeit it's, um, it's coming later than I, I expected that they would have done it. Or what the new leadership at the CBN 
uh, have for us. But definitely uh, go out there if you've not registered your NIN or your BVN uh, to your account. This is the time to start doing that before uh, the deadline so you don't lose your accounts. Thank you so much. Uh, it's always great having your perspective. Kelvin Emanuel, CEO of Derry Hills. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, so uh, let's take a look at all the markets now. We have uh, Willy Bonga with de details. It's a brand new trading week right here in Lagos, Nigeria. Great to have you, Will. What are we expecting? Oh, I expect a uh, bullish one as always. <laughs> Always bullish. always bullish. Always bullish. I'm very Will optimistic always about bullish. always optimistic about the market, laddie. So I just stay positive because last week we did see that uptick for the NGX, and you know it's one of the you know the barometer of the economy. Even right. though the inflation is skyrocketing, but the you know NGX is really moving up. Yeah, we still that have shows a debate about that. Some about that. Good, Thank you there's so some much. tailwinds Thank that you. are probably moving the markets. There's some good stuff that are here and there. Pockets of you know you. Uh, gains Thank that investors awesome. can you know Thank make you. in the market. So we just this take, you should go ask this side, laddie. Right. Well, this man. Right now. This man is a womanizer. Leave him. Oh, you have been monitoring I'm him. Been monitoring him. Because oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was seeing you scared there, so I was wondering. I'm scared for other people, oh, that, because at the end of the day, you know, we've had situations where um, some people get scammed, mm -hmm. and these monies get sent to particular accounts. Yes, definitely. And you ask yourself, how come these banks are not able to trace who owns which accounts? You know that kind of thing. So I'm wondering. At the end of the day, if everybody has their NIN and BVN attached, you should be able to clamp down on most Better of the scammers. Better transparency in the banking sector exactly. for everyone. It's really a good move right by the Central Bank of yeah. Nigeria, and we'll see how this goes and how much they can get in. I hope there's not going to be a rush, because you I know why when yeah, things come we, up... We don't like the rush, yeah. But I just hope that everybody is able to yeah. register. Put customers first. Yes, customers first, and get them to register at the time they should, right. very, very quickly. So let's just see how the market panned out last week. We're starting off with the FX markets, where we did see that further dip in the gross reserves, the Nigeria's gross reserves, the FX reserves, decreased by 168.42 million uh, dollars to 33 billion dollars now there's no way now we're heading towards 32 and this was at november the uh, uh november the 30th now this is the lowest point six october 2017 and let's take a closer look at the transactions at the fmdq exchange for last week we see a drop total transactions dropped by 13.03 percent to 597.45 million dollars we've seen that and it's no surprise there because we've seen that a 15.65 percent drop in the fx spot because we did, did see that depreciation at the NAFEM windows, now about ni over 900 naira to a dollar. We, uh, the only uptick we saw was for the forwards market, which was up over 1,700% to $18.9 million. And then we're seeing that movement in the market. But we're going to bring in now Kinskin KJ is the currency trader Access Bank, to give us more insights and more details as to what's happening in the market, why we're seeing this, and very much going to give us what to expect from the markets. Good morning, Kinskin. It's good to have you on the program. Good morning, Will. Thank you for having me. Uh, Kinskin, uh, our reserves are falling further this week. You know, seeing that level since two, we have not seen that level since 2017. Uh, what should we expect from the market? Could you give us a bit more background as a sense of what happened in the market last week? Why are we seeing this dip in our tr total transactions for F FX trading? Yeah, um, we are seeing the dip in total transactions, and that's total turnover. And that's, um, this is the third week uh, straight in a row where we are seeing a steady decline in the FX turnover. Um, last week, we saw it close up of 597 million in turnover and um, coming from 686 million the prior week. And uh, we are seeing um, the demand continue to surpass um, the supply of FX in the market. And given that, um, the investors are expecting that they conduct an OMO auction, which they are yet to see in the market. We've seen that during the bit and affect um, the funds who are coming into the market um, from um, the prior week. Uh, we also, we, we could see the decline in the FX um, reserve um, by 168 million. Um, this is given, uh, we're just seeing the impact of um, the continuous strides by the Apex Bank to continue to settle the FS backlogs in the market on a on a more strategic level. We will continue to see these um, steps by the CB until they exit the position for the outstanding forwards in the market. Also, also we could also... Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, we could also... Um, 
say that um, going to the end of the year, um, a lot of companies will be winding down. So we do not expect um, the high level of trading activities that we usually have in media or whatever. So because a lot of companies will be winding down by second week and third week of December, we'll see that um, affect trading a bit um, going to the end of the year. Okay, talking of winding down, so how low can the FX reserves go or get to as, as we approach the end of the year? And what is there, what news do we have about, you know, the promises we've had, the Saudi has promised some FX inflow to support the Central Bank of Nigeria. The federal government has said several things about bringing in money into the country uh, to show up the FX reserves. So what do we see about that? How low can these FX reserves get? We are nearing $32 uh, trillion now. Yeah, I, I actually do not think um, we are going to go that much lower um, going by the end of the year. Um, save the CBN, um, assess the funds and the reserve to clear out um, the FS backlog, the forward backlog on an aggressive note. But we know that they are going, um, they, are, they are continuing that clearance on a more strategic note. So they won't dip their hands into the reserve and then... Um, take up much funds. I do not see them doing that. Um, or, however, on the promises by the um, regulators and um, the presidency and the federal government on funds, we expect and we all buy into the hope, um, but we've not seen the actualization and the impact on the FS Reserve. And we can only hope to see that um, those actualizations start to come in by the end of this year. So what do we see the Naira closing in? What, how, how do you see the Naira closing that gap between the official rate and the parallel market rate? Do you see that gap closing in very soon? Because we are now at 927 at the NAFEM window and uh, over yeah, 1,000 um, at the... Yeah, 927 at the NAFEM window. But if you look at the volume traded across the rate ranges, you would see most of the rates, uh, most of the volumes traded are within the 800 and the 900 mark. Um, still, that still holds more of the volume being traded in the NAFEM currently. Um, but what we'll see um, going into the year is only a supply cure that can um, bring about the unification between um, the parallel market and the official uh, window. However, um, if we do not see that much supply to uh, bring in or harmonize these rates between the parallel and the official window, we'll continue to see this wide variance that we have been seeing um, going on to the end of the year where trades are happening between the 700 mark and as high as 1,151 levels. Thank you so much, Kinskin KJ, Currency Trader Access Bank, for sharing your insights on Business Morning. So we'll look at other markets now. We see the equities market closing last week with a 0.27% uptick. And this was driven by gains in Saplat and Nestle. We've seen that uptick. But the market cap, however, was down 0.23%, deep into 39.082 trillion naira. Now let's look at volume traded last week. We see that um, uptick for the... Um, for 2.54 billion uh, units traded last week, valued at 38.64 billion, all transacted 36,138 deals. Now, looking at sectoral performance, it was mixed following gains in the banking sectors was up 1.92%. Oil and gas was the outlier, 5.97% up, and this was driven by the gains in Seplat. Let's see how this market performs, this sector performs this week. And now, consumer goods down, uh, that's uh, industrial goods also. So down insurance also down last week. Now, Ladi, we're hoping that the NASD will look just a quick one. You see that it was also green last week. I think right. it's just, you know, the green stuff. You know, oh, yeah, that's really why green. I described it. It's you know, really, just rubbing really off on the week. NASD. And the right. market is really doing very well. It's because you see the Aradell Holdings, which, you know, listed as Niger Delta Explorations, now trading over 900 now, which started about 100 now. So you can tell the up, that, that there's growth in that market. So people should especially not just focus on the NGX, but look at the NASD the unlisted markets and see what they can, you know, yeah. make profit from. Right now, we need exactly. all the money we can get. If you have get. money to invest, invest. Thank you so much. It was always great having uh, your perspective <laughs> on the markets uh, there. Well, let's um, get a sense of what's happening at COP there. We see the 2023 United Nations Climate Change Conference. Uh, the Conference of Parties, more commonly referred to as COP28, is still on uh, right there at the Expo City uh, in Dubai, and we have our very own um, Ayola Kasim right there in Dubai to bring us uh, up to speed on what's uh, happening. Great to have you on the show. Good morning. Hello. Uh, 
Latin, how you doing today? I'm fine. <laughs> Good to speak to you all the way in Dubai. So uh, tell me now, how much is the world willing to spend to save the planet right now? Well, we're looking at $288 billion. Right? Oh, money. Of them, you know, coming here together to fight for the same amount, you know, to be able to be in every negotiating room, we need to be able to be in every room where the deal is being made. That's what you have to do while you're here now, and that's what the Nigerian delegation is trying to do at this COP, trying to be in all the rooms to ensure that they get this deal done. Yeah, I guess that's why we have so many delegates um, up there right now. Definitely, they'll be able to be in most of those rooms uh, to bring us um, other deals. But what are we expecting um, going forward this week? I think that you didn't get that. I said, what are we expecting this week? Yeah. All right, expecting this week. So we're going into the negotiations already started at this point in time here at the COP. Uh, so we're going into this room, making sure that, you know, this money, uh, the, the, the pledges that have been made before now uh, are being put into the notes. They're being uh, in, the in the negotiating papers. So from what I heard, one of our negotiators that I spoke to just before this interview, he said, well, Africa is stalling. They promised us $100 billion in 2009. They've not done that. Now they are pledging about $100 and $100 million in the Los Andamic Fund, where everybody is excited about. But then, it's not just saying we are going to do this. It's about committing to doing this. And how can they commit to doing this? It's in the text. That is what is being negotiated now. And as I was told, which is unusual, that Africa is stalling. We are not, we are like, we are like no, you're not saying the right thing that we want to hear at this point in time. So we want you to say the right thing at this point in time. So that is the moment. That is what we are now. That's what we are doing now. That is what they are, uh, they are, they are talking about now. That's what they are pulling for at this moment in time. You know, to be, to be able to get a larger chunk that's yes, definitely Africa will be looking to say the right things, uh, hopefully, but we'll keep tracking uh, what uh, is said you know, going forward. Thank you so much for uh, joining us, uh, Sayola Kasim, there, a Channel TV correspondent right there in Dubai. Thank you so much. First trip above the forty thousand dollar mark since April. Left. All right, so let's um, get a sense of what's happening now with other markets. We see it's um, it's a day of um, new highs uh, today. We're seeing gold hit new highs. We're also seeing Bitcoin right now, which has also been called digital gold, also hitting uh, deep highs today. And you see it's a very deep green uh, this morning. If you're looking at the color from Coin um, Three Sixty, they are showing the color of the market massive. Deep 5.53% jump we're seeing for uh, Bitcoin this morning. Ethereum is also in the green. It's all green on the screen at this time. Just little pockets of red uh, right there showing that the market is very bullish. Let's look at the sentiment um, right now. How are traders feeling? Very greedy. Yeah, it's expected. Bitcoin crossing so many resistance. Definitely there's greed. A lot of greed right now. 74 points. Uh, looking at the fear greed uh, index of the market. Let's look at the top cryptocurrencies we track. Now we see Bitcoin there. $41,587. Um, big, big, big jump we're seeing right there. 5.53%. Ethereum not left out. 4.55%. Still um, going deep up above that psychological point of $2,000. Um, we see an XRP 63 cents. So it's, it's a strongly uh, bullish uh, market we're seeing this morning. Let's bring in Rume Ofi now. Uh, tell us what's driving sentiment. Great to have you, Rume. Good morning. Good morning, Ladi. Good morning. It's a green Monday. Yeah, really, really green. And uh, tell me, why is it so green? <laughs> a lot of sentiment going on. A lot of expectation. Uh, ETF is getting even closer. All of the expectation that all of the ETFs are going to be approved in January is very, uh, very, very exciting to uh, investors right about now. And also the fact that there are some telltale signs that probably the Fed could be done with its hiking spray. So probably uh, next year, March or so, we could be seeing some uh, pause uh, there and there. Also, we are also looking at uh, a couple of things happening in different parts of the world, some clarity regulation in Europe. Also, we are seeing that the fact that even Africa, South Africa, is about this morning are going to approve about 35 
to no, about 36 uh give license to 36 exchange platform crypto exchange platform so all of these pulled together is a, is a show but on the flip side uh we shouldn't get too excited uh, those that are taking higher risk should be very careful because from friday last week to now about 222 million uh has been wiped out of the market from a perpetual uh, future so those that are coming into the market to make to this with the expectation they're going to make quick gains they should be careful i think about 120 million dollars for shots uh so these shots were crushed to wreck city right there i think uh we need to be very careful because uh in the process of making uh or getting greedy you can also get yourself into trouble so uh, all of these things put together, it's um, something, some things we need to consider. We are very close to the all-time high of 2021. This is just 19 months. Uh, this the, this uh, price today, it's, um, the last time we saw it, it's about 19 months ago. And also, we're about 48% uh, from the uh, all-time high of about $69, this is $9,000. So, good, good, a green day. Uh, maybe one of the reasons why I'm wearing green today. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and, and definitely, you know, in a bullish market, it can be quite difficult, you know, navigating, day trading, or even going long on investments. Talk to me about handling um, FOMO. That's the fear of missing out in this kind of market. All right. So uh, we, we need to be very, very, most especially young people, uh, because this industry is really appealing to them. So a lot of them might want to take trading as a career. So uh, don't chase candles. Very, very important. Don't chase candles. Because at some point, we need to also understand the fact that it, it, emotions play a very huge role in all of these things that we are doing. But again, we need to guide our emotions. You can't, you, you can't take it away. So you manage them really well. So when the candles are green, you don't have to chase them. You have to wait. The market runs for 24 hours, four days, and seven days in a week. You know, there's no break. There's no break in the crypto market, right? Like the stock, you can always see some other uh, cryptocurrencies to make uh, your bet on or buy to hold, depending on your investment uh, strategy. Then also, you also need to understand that uh, you don't have to over leverage. People take it for fun to do 10x, 20x, 30x, 100x. In fact, people give themselves so much pressure that on a monthly basis, I have to make 100%. In fact, you see these days with some adverts saying, double your money in XYZ amount. Those are those are not uh, how you ought to be. Those are really, really bad way to see the entire industry. The industry right. is very big. Trade is just a part of it. Yeah. So uh, definitely, uh, Brume, the, the way I see it, there's a lot of pressure in a bear market, but it seems like there's even more pressure in a bullish market because you're trying to decide what do you do what do you do if you're not in the market exactly. so a lot for exactly. investors to actually take in at this time thank you so much always great having your press uh, your perspective Rume Ofi thank you always a pleasure Lani. always a pleasure yeah, so that's how the markets are uh, looking today. We're seeing new highs for Bitcoin. We're seeing that's for digital gold. We're also seeing new highs for gold. That's the bullion um, right there. So that's how the market is looking. Very greedy market today. We keep tracking it, and uh, we'll give you more details on Business Incorporated at 1.30. So that's it uh, on the program today. Don't forget, you can visit www.channelcv.com uh, for more updates. Also, follow us on all our social media uh, uh, handles there. Just search for Channels Television. Uh, from me and the team, from Channels HQ, right here in Lagos, it's bye for now.